Today, I have the honor of giving you guys an updated tour of the Explorer 195, built by Imperial Outdoors. Now, the first question you probably have is, who's this guy and where's Shane? Don't worry, Shane's coming later on the video. But my name is Brandon. I'm usually behind the camera here at Way Off-Road, on the computer editing. But today, I have the honor of doing a full tour or an updated full tour on this trailer. We've had this trailer for just about a year now and we spent weeks in it. We've been in cold temps with it. We've been in hot temps with it. We've been off-roading with it. We've been on highways with it. We put thousands of miles on it. And there's a lot of things we've learned about this trailer. And so we kind of thought it was fitting to give you guys an updated tour on this trailer since the last one we did was almost a year ago. Now, another exciting thing is there's also some options that we're offering for this trailer. So you can kind of make it your own and do what fits you. This trailer, is an American built trailer built in Wisconsin by Imperial Outdoors. Along with using it for about a year now, we've had our roamers get our hands on it and stay in it. And we've gathered some feedback and so I'm excited to give you an updated tour on this thing. So let's get into it. Now, what makes this trailer unique? Well, first of all, like I mentioned, it's built in America. That's one thing that makes it unique. We could talk about its off-grid capability. It's over a thousand amp hours of battery. 1240 watts of solar that makes it unique but I want to start off with the thing that I think makes this trailer really special and that is these tires and what's behind it the cruise master suspension so let's hop under there and I'll show you and talk to you guys about that the cruise master suspension is amazing it just simply works and it works really well this is the cruise master ATX suspension so we have one two three four airbags four tires on the ground it has gas shocks as well a large compressor so filling them up is really quick and easy and when we take this thing off road it kind of feels like you're just driving on pavement sometimes because of how smooth these airbags work airbags are amazing for a couple reasons one is they're kind of like cushions for your trailer the airbags will eat up a lot of those washboard roads those those rocks that you go over and the trailer itself and everything above the suspension won't get rocked around and rattled as much and there's one more underrated thing about airbags, and it's actually when this trailer is parked. And you might be saying, that doesn't make any sense. But when you get to a campsite, especially when you're camping off grid and on dirt roads, on BLM land, wherever it is, it's really hard to find a site that's completely flat. So when you have airbags, you can actually just pull up to camp. If your campsite's a little uneven, it's not too big of a deal because these work independently of each other. So the left side and right side, can actually level the trailer out. That way you're not spending 30 minutes to an hour backing up on the blocks, seeing if it's level, pulling forward, doing it over again. This saves you a ton of time and just makes setting up for camp super easy. The other incredible thing about these airbags is it actually has six and a half inches of lift from its lowest point to its highest point. So if there's an obstacle you come across, maybe you have a large rock, you can lift this thing up over six inches and you clear that obstacle. And we did a video on the, the airbags as well, and we suggest having them kind of in the middle for most things. But when you need to, you can lower all the way when you're at camp and make things a little bit easier to access. And the third and final thing that's amazing about the suspension is it makes this trailer tow incredible. We've towed it with an F-150, we've towed it with a 2500, we've towed it with a power wagon. And this trailer, it's the same every time, it's great. So if this is your first trailer and you're kind of nervous about towing, I wouldn't be too, too concerned because this trailer, it just right down the freeway will tow right behind you. And then for off road, the towability is amazing too because of the Cruise Master suspension, but also the Cruise Master DO45 hitch that articulates all directions, 360 degrees. It makes towing this thing incredible. So that's the Cruise Master suspension. Now I'm going to talk about one more thing that makes this trailer unique before I kick it to Shane. The next unique thing about this trailer is its four season capability. So this trailer is crafted by Imperial Outdoors and they're in Wisconsin. And some of you may know Wisconsin gets pretty cold. They also started out building ice fish houses. So they know how to camp in cold temps and this trailer is kind of proof of that. This trailer, the walls are just about two and a half inches thick. It's got a Truma Combi furnace. Not only does it have a furnace, but it's actually ducted throughout the trailer. So it's ducted to the water lines, the, the water tanks are heated. Even the lithium batteries have a vent going into them to keep them warm. 
This trailer is designed for American temps, and we've seen it with some other Australian-made trailers. Australia, if you know, they just don't really get cold temps. So this trailer, built in America, built for cold temps, its four season capability is unparalleled. We ourselves have been in this trailer in Imperial Outdoors products in below zero temperature, and we've stayed nice and toasty. So if you're looking for a camper that can be cool in the summer and warm in the winter, this trailer is your trailer because of how thick those walls are and the insulation is amazing. So that's another unique thing about this trailer. Now I'm gonna kick it to Shane and he's gonna go over the specs of this trailer. Weight, length, width, all of that. So take it away, Shane. I wanna talk a little bit about the specs. Everybody wants to know all of those details. So let's start with the overall length. The overall length from the very tip of the hitch all the way to right here, the back of the wall is 26 feet and one inches. So that's not going to include the tire or the cargo. So you're gonna get about close to 27 feet with all the stuff on the back of it. The trailer itself is 26 feet, one inches. The overall width, and this is from the fender, the wheel fender to the each side is 91 inches wide. The overall height of the trailer is just under 10 feet. That's nine foot, nine inches. So you're gonna be pretty tight with the 10 foot garage, but you should be able to roll it in. Now the, uh, the overall travel with the actual suspension, it goes up about six and a half inches. So you can have about, you have about close to 23, 24 inches of ground clearance to any of the skid plates underneath there. And all of the tanks and everything is all covered with metal, steel. So it's very, very strong and robust. The unit weight, is 5,500 pounds. That's pretty light for a trailer this size. The reason why is because they're using very, very premium products, composites, aluminum, and that just leads to very, very light, um, but very robust and strong as well. Fully loaded, or the GVWR, is 9,920 pounds. So you have 4,000 420 pounds of cargo capacity. So <laughs> it's a ton of cargo capacity, more than you would ever, ever need. Your tongue weight is coming in about 560 pounds, but that's at 5,500 pounds dry weight. Now, let me tell you a little bit what that weight is. That is this bare bones. So this has some different options and I'll get more into that later. You have solar, options you have battery bank options and of course you have your accessories on the rear so that 5500 pounds that's dry that's without propane tanks that's a stage one solar a stage one battery bank so this unit can have up to 1240 watts of solar and so if you're stage one, you're only 240 watts of solar, which only that's pretty phenomenal. <laughs> Lots of trailers don't even have solar. So 240 watts and one lithium battery. It's a 360 amp hour lithium battery. Stage one, that's that 5,500 pounds. And that's without any tire or cargo box on the rear. So if you were to max this trailer out, which means max solar, get your propane tanks, your gear, your car, some goodies that come with Explorer, like the ladder for putting the awning up, all the solar, all the battery possible, you're actually getting close to 6,200 pounds um, with about an 800 pound tongue on it. So a little bit heavier. So just keep that in mind. If you're going fully loaded, you're really gonna be closer to 6,000 pounds. Once you put all your gear, your water, you're gonna be pushing anywhere from 66 up to 7,000 pounds when you're fully loaded with gear. So, you know, even if you're at 7,000 or 7,500, this pretty much will fit in the range of any half ton trucks. And this thing tows amazing. I've never towed a trailer that tows so, so well. I've had this <laughs> over 90 miles per hour on the freeway, very comfortably in a half ton F-150. Uh, if you got your Raptor, your TRX, you know, most of those are gonna be rated for more than 7,000 pounds. And realistically, you're not gonna be really over 7,000 pounds if you fully load this. If you do wanna be a little bit lighter and you wanna tow it, you know, with something smaller, which I wouldn't really recommend anything under a half ton, you could potentially go with the stage one 
and get it down to you know that 5,500 pounds. Okay, over here, I wanna talk a little bit about what these are. These are tank vents. Right here, we have the exhaust for the Truma Combi. This is the uh, D Plus version. So it has a stage three, which is about a 7,000, 14,000 to 20,400 BTU. Uh, and this works as the furnace, the heater, and also the water heater. And it's, it is a forced air heater. Coming over to here, uh, this compartment is a your water management system or your wet bay, some people will call them. One of the things I do want to talk about is the, these do seal really well. Um, it's a little bit dirty in here, but that's probably because we've been just getting in there and making messes. But you have a nice seal here, seal here, and you also have a seal on the inside. Here you have all your controls for your air suspension. You do have an outside shower, so you can actually just punch this in right here and you have an outside shower. You also have a uh, water pump out here. So you have a two-way switch, one on the inside and one on the outside, which is nice. So you don't have to run in if you wanna use this outside shower. And then this system right here, this is the, the Nautilus system and really convenient system to use. You have a little diagram here that tells you how to adjust these valves to for your use case, right? So we're dry camping right now. So this says have this valve down, these two up, and this one to the right. Now, if I were to go to a campground and I wanted to go to city water and not be using my freshwater tanks, then I would just put this down, this one over here, that one up, up, perfect. That's city water, right? If I want to winterize my trailer, I'd go this way and then this way. And that's how you would, and then you would pump antifreeze and winterize all your faucets and everything really really simple and when you come to pick up your trailer from roa that's one of the things that we do we do a very thorough walkthrough teach you all this go into lots of depth to and we also have a video library of things that teach you how to operate and manage everything so your in what inlet is pressurized so it does have a pump it will pull and then also you have another button here which is your macerator or your gray tank um, drain system so you what's really cool about the gray tank and the freshwater tank is the drain valves over here. It's a standard spigot, like a standard garden hose spigot. But down here, you just turn the valve and then you go turn on that pump and it actually is pressurized and it's a macerator. So it actually can cut up any grind. So if you have hair that's going down in the shower into the gray tank, a lot of times that stuff will get clogged up. With this, the macerator actually chops it up like a blender and it's pressurized and it will push it out. So if you're in a weird, awkward space and you can't get to like, like you could actually put a hose, a hundred foot hose and take it into your house and like drain it through your bathtub upstairs. So it's kind of a cool system there. If you're out in an area where you're just kind of in an awkward spot to get to the drain, you put it in there and run it and it just pushes it, pressurizes it out. Really, really cool. Um, right here you have an air and this is, an, this is a line out. So if you need to pressurize or air up your tires, the Cruise Master air compressor that works your airbags for your suspension also works as duels as a pump. So you can pump up tires, rafts, boats, whatever you want. You have mountain bikes and you need to pump up your tires. You'll have like a air chalk right there and you can pump up really easily. And then you have this remote controller and this gives you the ability to adjust your airbags side to side to level. And you also have a gauge right here that tells you your pressure, turn it on and off. And then you also have a uh, drain to drain out your air because you shouldn't always leave it full. Another thing that I want to point out is these keys um, on the actual doors. There is one key and it fits all of the doors, the entry door, and the compartment door. They're all keyed to one single key. Those are some of the details that Imperial has been really good about and I really, really appreciate it. Before we move too far away from our water system, I do wanna mention the water tank capacities. You have a 60 gallon fresh water tank and a 60 gallon gray tank. So the tanks match them, which is pretty uncommon, believe it or not. This does have a gel coat and this is painted right up here. Let's talk about the walls a little bit. The walls are almost four inches thick. It is a composite material, so there's no aluminum. It's a fiberglass exterior and a fiberglass interior, and then a high density foam core in the middle. It's unbelievable. This same material is used for 
the walls, floors, and ceiling. So the whole entire box, and, and they're all one piece panels. So with the walls being all one piece, the only places that you're going to actually have heat or cold transference is going to be through the windows, but the windows are dual pane windows. So they have a gas in the middle, they're a Eurovision uh, polycarbonate, and polycarbonate is great. It's a lot stronger than glass, but it's also less conductive. But that is definitely where your weak points are gonna be. And also these, these are extrusions, these aluminum extrusions. These also are going to be another weak point where uh, you're gonna get hot and cold through. But through the walls themselves, like, it's unbelievable. When I was up in five below zero, the outside was five degrees below zero, right? Um, if you were to touch the exterior of the wall, it was five degrees or negative five. It was frigid. If you went inside, the temperature was turned up to like 70, 72 degrees. And when you touched the wall on the inside, it was like 72 degrees. The ambient air temperature of the inside of the trailer was the walls on the inside. So there was, I don't wanna say there was no heat transfer because I'm sure that's not the case, but it didn't feel like there was any heat transfer. Now through the aluminum extrusions, there definitely was some air, cold air coming through and through the windows, but there's a nice blind with a reflective covering. And when you close that up, that's gonna reflect the heat away. And it also did block the cold air even. I mean, you're not gonna eliminate all the cold air no matter what, but as far as a trailer goes, there's nothing on the market that's gonna compare to the Explorer, the Imperial Outdoors. Okay, I'm buttoning in now. The next thing I wanna talk about is this pass-through storage. And there's actually an option that we have now for this storage. First, this storage goes the width of the trailer, plenty of space here to store your things if that's how you want it. You got a light here, a light on the other side. You'll be surprised how many storage compartments don't have lights, but this trailer has one on each side. But the option for this space is an outdoor kitchen. So this trailer doesn't come with an outdoor kitchen. It's got a beautiful inside kitchen that you can cook on, induction cooktop, giant sink. You'll see that later on the tour. If you've happened to seen our Romer 1 trailer, it's no secret that the X195, the trailer we're looking at today, this trailer is kind of the base model version of the Romer 1. And that Romer 1 has an outdoor kitchen. And that kitchen actually goes right into this pass-through storage. It was designed here at ROA Off-Road by the team. A lot of R&D went into it. And it pulls out of this compartment right here. It's got a sink with hot and cold water. And it's got a propane hookup with a Pit Boss grill. And it's on a Slide Master slide, which is super durable and strong. We've actually had somebody sit on it without a problem. And so that kitchen that's crafted by ROA Off-Road, if you're interested in that kitchen and we want an outdoor kitchen on this trailer, we now are offering that option. Like I said, this is an option. The kitchen's just an option. If you wanna keep this incredible pass-through storage, you can keep it. It's amazing how it comes. You can put a bunch of stuff in here, but if you prefer having an outdoor kitchen, we can do that too. So like I said, these are all options. Now I'm gonna kick it back to Shane. Right here you have the uh, Furion 30 amp input power. And so if you're at a campground or you have a generator, and you need the power, this is where you're gonna hook it up to. Very simple. This also has a little light to illuminate, so you know there's actually power. Right above it, we have a Go Power, and this is an inlet. So if you do wanna get some extra solar panels, you can have that going into the batteries and giving you some extra energy. The roof, actually, like I said, you have different options. Stock, you have 240 watts of solar but you can that's stage one if you want to go to stage two and get over 700 watts or you can go all the way up to stage three and have 1240 watts of solar on the roof this roof is it's a walkable roof if you put the entire 1240 watts of solar there is zero space to walk up there it's completely covered now all you see is the ac and the max vent but it's all solar the solar it's actually mounted above the roof so it's elevated up there on the on the entire roof you have the t-track system that's going around the entire perimeter of the roof and you have a rack that goes from side to side so they have not screwed or mounted through the panel of the roof which is great because the the less holes you put in the roof the less likely you're going to ever have leakage right so in any type of construction the ideal is uh, you know, less screws equals less potential of water intrusion into the trailer. Uh, the, really the only places that have potential water intrusion would be um, along the track system, the actual AC 
vent, but those are all sealed up properly. As long as everything is sealed up properly, you'll never have issues. But also another cool thing about that solar system being on the tracks and off the roof is there's a little bit of an air gap, maybe about an inch or so. So the air can actually flow under there. And it's one of the most efficient ways to install solar panels. I love the way it's been installed. It's really, really good. Okay, moving up to the front area, as you can see, they've added some extra weld plates right here. Uh, this is a potential weak point and they've added a plate on it to just reinforce it and make it stronger. The entire frame, it's a uh, powder coated e with an E-coat primer and it's one fourth inch uh, closed tube steel. So it's very, very strong, very robust. One of the things that I really like that he's done is this all goes through a CNC machine and it's laser cut. So the frame is always the same all the time and and the the actual cross members they have locking points where they're laser cut out and they slide in and then they get welded in um, and this is really important because a lot of times <laughs> when people build trailers believe it or not they measure things right they cut them measure them and so it depends there's a lot of human air that gets involved right if, if you're not interlinking them or cutting them with a laser and a computer every single time they can get they can sometimes, if it's Monday or Friday, <laughs> you get a lot of human air into it. So he's just tried to do that. And it's the same thing with all the panels. They're all CNC'd, cut out. And whenever you can uh, use those machines and the computers, it tends to eliminate a lot of the human air that you get with a trailer. Believe it or not, like people always are like, why aren't trailers just perfect like cars, right? First of all, cars are not perfect, but Cars are very highly autonomous, right? I mean, like the factories, the, the process of building cars, there's so much robotics going on, but it's also because they make millions and millions and millions of cars. It's a, it's a trillion dollar industry. And so you get all those robotics and machinery, and that tends to eliminate a lot of the human air and trailers have a lot of human air. Um, luckily, the, he's trying to do some of those things to one, you know, create the process a little bit consistent and also eliminate a lot of the human air out of it. Now I wanna talk about the, the jack right here. This is the jockey wheel. This is made by Arc. This is an Australian company. The idea behind this is if you got in a weird situation and you wanted to put that all the way at the lowest point, you could recover your vehicle. You could obviously hook up the chains or wrap something around it and pull it. Uh, we use this on flat surfaces in our shop all the time. You just gotta make sure it's all the way down in the lowest position before you can roll it around anywhere. Um, but what's really cool about this is when you bring it up, when you're hooked up, you can bring it up and it swivels out of the way completely. So it's actually flush with the frame. So you're not gonna knock these off because you tend to, when you're in an off-roading situation, you're going up and down. I mean, we were just in an off-roading situation yesterday and the ditches that we were going into was coming all the way down and kind of scraping right here. And if this was hanging down, it would have just gotten knocked off and ruined, right? Under the same theme of the ARC jockey wheels, they've also used these ARC stabilizer jacks. And typically I tell everybody with stabilizer jacks, they're stabilizer jacks, which means you cannot put any weight on them. You just, just a little bit of pressure, just so the trailer doesn't shake as much. Each one of these legs is rated for over 1900 pounds. So combined weight of almost, what, eight, almost 8,000 pounds. Coming over to here, this entire front cargo box area is all aluminum. It's light, it's good quality. You're not gonna be dealing with rusting either. In here, you have your extension cord. You also have your air tools. Like I mentioned, you can, ha you can air up your tires and it actually comes with an air tool and even a gauge so you can power, you know, air up your tires on your truck or like I said, a raft or a boat, whatever, or your bicycle. And then you also, it also comes with right here, against the wall, a nice little ladder, pretty light too. It's very light actually. Um, it's all aluminum. And I'll show you where that goes in just a little bit. We'll walk around and I'll show you the yawning and how that goes up. But before we do that, I wanna walk over to here. And this space right here is actually designed for a, actually look at this, I'll put, grab the ladder and walk up there. So if you did have like a bicycle, you wanted to walk up here, you also have these steps 
points right here. So you can step up and you can climb all the way up. And they, they designed this space for a bike mount that we can actually offer you. And it's uh, suitable for two bicycles, mountain bikes or street bikes. So very nice area up here and lots of space. You could put firewood or whatever you want. Up here we also have mounted to the T-Track system, this little plate. And this is an ideal place to put your uh, traction boards or your uh, recovery gear. We've also been working with a company on making us some other mounting boxes for more storage that will mount up here. And then we also have a light bar, which is really cool <laughs> as we were traveling through that off-roading situation just the other night. we. Uh, actually got dark and we were coming down in the snow so we all stopped turned on all of our light bars and boom it just lit up the entire trail and we were flying through and it was pretty fun pretty terrifying actually but you have these step points on both sides everything is locking and works off that single key right here you have a little mounting bracket system and this is for the steps that go into the entry of the trailer the most common stairs are stairs that are dangling outside and those we tend to knock off when we go off-roading. But see these ones, they just come up here and it actually just slides in like this. If you can see that, it has two little brackets and then it even has a nice little pin that goes in there and locks them in. Now the only unfortunate thing is this does take a little bit of the storage area up here kind of makes it not super usable because you need to get those in and out all the time but this bucket for underneath the tire we've been putting that in there because when you get to wherever you're camping you're obviously pulling that out first and then all your tools for like setting up so it's not so bad and these are actually pretty deep in here i don't know if you can tell but there's i'm reaching the all the way in so it's, it's my whole arm length. So there's some space to put some tall, skinny stuff. But you just get to camp, pull that out. And that little pin that you use to lock it in is the same pin that you can use for the steps. Because this goes right there, locks there, but there's actually a little hole right there that pins in and locks it so it can't fall off. And then these steps do adjust with these little pins right here. You can pop those out and you can adjust the stairs up and down because obviously on or if you're on a weird angle you know you can have one longer or shorter than the other so pretty nice little setup um, coming back over here i just want to point out you do have these molly boards these are actually proprietary it's not the exact same thing as a molly board but you can mount stuff up here coming up here all this plate is aluminum as well it's very thick gauge too and then in the very front area we have the cruise master and this is paired up with the suspension it is the atx which is the heaviest duty cruise master suspension with the four wheels on the ground and you can see right here they have a cool little emblem right there this is the fitted with genuine cruise master suspension you have integrated into the the braking system a handbrake so you can brake this when you get to camp i would still recommend chalking your wheels just to be safe if you're on a really steep area but it does lock up you have your standard seven pin you have a breakaway and then of course you have your chains this is the do 45 which is the larger one of cruise master and you can see this articulates in every single direction you could have your truck flat and you could have the trailer upside down and i'll tell you what <laughs> there were a few moments that we were on that trail that i thought i was pretty i was i was i was having nightmares as of us actually going <laughs> going under and you can see this how this articulates up and down like you can be on a pretty good wash with the truck going up and the trailer down I mean, you could have the trailer straight up a cliff. <laughs> now, like people are, people always ask the question, how does it tow with these hitches? Actually, they tow really, really good. These trailers, I've already mentioned, they, they're the, one of the best towing trailers I've ever towed. But 
the cool thing is this allows the truck and trailer to kind of like move independently of each other, right? So off-road or on-road, as you're driving down the freeway, right? You don't necessarily want it so stiff because then it's like yanking the truck. This allows you to kind of like move back and forth and it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't really lead to any sway that I've ever experienced. Off-road, it's essential because if you're going in a wash or side to side, a ball is going to get caught up and just, it's the weakest point. It's going to end up busting or something's gonna bust. So with this, you're really able to move side to side in every direction. Absolutely essential for an off-road trailer. So let's head on over here. We have our propane tanks and these are 20 pounders and they have a nice slide out tray and they have an automatic transfer switch that will transfer from tank to tank. You can point it to which one you wanna start with and when it runs out, it will switch over. But you, uh, 20 pounders, I think some people will probably think, oh, that's not enough. Honestly, for this trailer, it is enough because number one, it has a pure electric refrigerator. So there, you're not using propane on your refrigerator like a standard RV. Uh, also, your, your stove top is an induction cooktop. So that's all electric too. So you're not using propane for your induction, for your cooktop or your oven or stove. So the really only reason why you're using this is one for the furnace and for the water heater. During the summer, you'll probably fill these up and never fill them up ever again because that water heater is pretty efficient. During the winter, yeah, you might run into a situation where the furnaces take the most amount of heat or the most amount of propane than anything else on any type of RV or camper. But the thing is with the walls, it's unbelievably efficient. Like you're gonna be able to go in frigid temperatures for well beyond a week with both of these propane tanks without an issue. There's so many variables, right? Whether it's 30 degrees or zero degrees or negative 40 degrees, you're gonna consume more heat, obviously. But we've been, I mean, I don't even, I need to calculate and see exactly how long it lasts, but I'm pretty sure I had one tank for over a week um, running the heater, water heater, and like no issue. So two tanks, this is a good amount for a trailer with such good insulation properties. And this is the other side of that pass-through storage. Nothing to see there. There is a light. You have great access into it. Before we head inside, I want to show off the awning and show you how to set that thing up. Sorry for interrupting Shane, but I want to be the one to talk about this awning. There's this batwing style awning. As you can see, it wraps around the back. It goes in the front over the door. They actually added an extra piece there. So when it goes over the door, no rain's gonna get in between the awning and the door, which is really well thought out. The great thing about this awning is that it's manual. Manual means there's no electric components, which means it's not gonna fail. If you're out of battery for some reason, or maybe a fuse blows out, something weird happens, your trailer's struck by lightning. I'm not saying you'll run out of power because this thing has a huge battery bank, over a thousand amp hours of lithium. But if something weird happens, you know this awning will work because it's manual. It just has two tie points, one on the back end and one on the front end, and it gets really nice and tight. This awning's held up in pretty gusty winds. When they had it at the show, when we first saw this trailer, they actually left the awning out all night. I wouldn't always recommend doing that, but they did and it held up just fine. It actually also has legs that come out from each point. So if you wanna make it even more sturdy, you can put those legs out. Other cool thing about this awning is it has zips on the top and you can actually zip on an additional room. So this trailer, we'd recommend it for couples, but let's say you have a, a family or you're having guests over and it's, it's nice weather outside, you can actually zip on an additional room and kind of make it like a tent. So it really expands the space of the trailer. The last thing that's great about this awning is its coverage. It goes all the way over the back. It, and the back has this cargo box here. So if you're working back there or getting stuff out, you have coverage there. And it goes all the way over the front door. Now I want to mention the options that we have. We can now option this trailer with an electric awning. So if you're a person that just kind of wants to push a button or hold down a button and that awning comes out and gives you shade or protects you from the rain, we now can do that on the X195. And for some people, they prefer just pushing a button, but for others, they prefer having more coverage and having a more sturdy and reliable option. So both are great options and you can talk to a sales coach and they can help you kind of choose what will fit you best. 
That's the awning options. You have a manual option, which comes stock and it's amazing and robust and strong, or you can do an electric awning for convenience. So let's kick it back to Shane and he's gonna take you guys inside this beautiful trailer. As we head in, uh, you can see we do have a porch light right above the door. And then this door opens up. You have a uh, some little magazine racks. Maybe you could throw some flashlights in there. This door operates very nicely. It's very smooth when it shuts. And I love this latch latching mechanism. We can show you later when you're actually inside. And if it's completely latched, this is how you lock it on the inside. You do have a screen here that slides out and locks in right there. And so you can, on those breezy summer days, you can just you know, keep the bugs out, but keep some cross breeze coming in. But I'm gonna take my shoes off and head on inside. I really wanna point out that this door is pretty thick and the window is a uh, dual pane. I've seen trailers where it's like, we got good insulation and then they have like paper thin doors with single pane windows. So that is a nice little touch. And you also do have a shade to block it out. Come on in, welcome inside. It is beautiful in here. Uh, truly an Airstream on steroids. I mean, this thing uh, honestly is even gonna be better than most Airstreams because all the componentry in this trailer is actually better. Everything in here is really nice. You have real wood cabinetry. It's like a Baltic birch. So it's very light, but very strong. You also have a locking metal latches. As you can see, these are all metal and they come down and they clip into a metal part here. Also with gas struts, you have a good amount of storage, uh, but they lock in and they do not open. <laughs> so, and you can see that throughout. Uh, this has a very nice veneer finish um, and the lighting throughout the trailer is very abundant. Over here, we have a Bluetooth speaker that can actually come off the mount and you can take it outside and play some music. Then it slides on here and charges and it actually stays on very, very, very well because we've been pretty off-roading pretty hardcore. Thanks Shane for introducing us to this beautiful interior. Now I'm gonna talk about the booth because there's an option for the booth, but first I wanna talk about what's here. I'm a big guy, I'm not hiding it and I can fit anywhere in this booth. This also turns into a bed. I've actually slept here. I'm 6'2", and it's long enough for me. I think it's six feet, four inches, something like that. So if you need to have a guest over, you can sleep somebody right here. This table just easily goes down. You lock these, and it turns into a bed. So there's actually a cushion under here that goes right here, and you can sleep another person. So the option that we offer for the Romer One was a more plush cushion. These cushions are great, not a problem for most people. These are just fine. But if you want to sleep somebody here on a regular occasion, or you just kind of want a cushier seat for your tush, <laughs> you can get a thicker cushion. We actually get them from a local custom upholstery shop. And it's something we did on the Romer One. You've probably seen it. It's got stitched Romer One right here. That stitching won't be there if you get this option on the X195, but you can still get those nice thick cushions so you can sit a little bit more comfortably. And, and if you're sleeping somebody here on the regular basis, it's a great option to make their night's rest a little bit better. Under all of these cushions, you have lots and lots of storage and it's very deep. And you can see all of this is wood. It's not particle board uh, and it's not wrapped with a sticker on it or anything. And it's also not honeycomb. We've dealt so much you know, with trailers, when wood is such an issue, you know, if you're using honeycombs or particle particle board, things just warp and bend. Uh, you, any type of wood is potential for, you know, warping because it's wood, it's not perfect, right? But they're definitely using a much more high quality wood in here and veneers. So you're not gonna have issues with delamination. But this is a nice, long table. I have my computer set up in the other trailer that I'm staying in and lots of space to hang out here. You can put four adults around this table comfortably. Okay, let's head over to the kitchen area and you have pretty much the same type of cabinets on both sides. And I love how there's a lift in here too. 
So you're not gonna, things aren't gonna slide out while you're driving, right? Right here you have your two burner induction cooktop and then you have all your controls for your water gauges, your tank heaters. Remember this is designed for extreme temperatures. So besides the furnace, this is ducted down into the heat tanks, to the tanks, the water and gray tank. You have heat blowing down there, but you also have tank heaters for extra cold <laughs> temperatures. Right here, there's your sensor for your uh, Truma. I wanna talk a little bit about these windows. I really like them, very functional, I should say. Uh, you got the screens, these are very fine too, so any small insects are not gonna be able to make it through. But also at night, and also for the sun, there's a the back side of this is kind of reflective. Um, and that closes down nicely. And it's really dark at night when you're sleeping in here. But I also wanna show you how these windows work. See, these windows locked in, uh, kinda open, so that's shut all the way. Now to unlock them, just press these little buttons right there and turn it. And you push it out. When you hear that click noise, you stop and it's out. You want to go up higher, you can, and then that creates more airflow, and then that's on its maxed out height. But you could, you know, put the screen up and have lots of nice airflow in. If you don't want the windows open that far, and at night you just want a little bit of a crack to get some fresh air in here, also helps with condensation. Maybe you turn on the fan. You can actually bring this, and there's two settings here. Um, so you can go inside this track, and that's actually, there's a little bit of a crack but I would definitely have the screen up if I was gonna do that. But if you want it completely closed, obviously you don't want it cracked open if you're off-roading because the dirt's gonna get in here. To completely close it, pull it all the way and lock it on that outer portion. And that's completely closed. I mentioned that this earlier, I believe that it's like, Something like a hundred times stronger than glass polycarbonate. That, that's how they do bulletproof, you know, windows, yachts, marine, anything boat, airplanes, right? They're gonna use either polycarbonate, acrylic type of window and much stronger and much better than glass. The biggest problem with them is just over time they might fade or dis like have some color disfiguration. But while we're right here, let's talk about the sink area. This is very cool. I love how they have these boards that give you some uh, counter space if you need it. You can also stow those away. Comes with this nice little cutting board and it slides right in here. You can go all the way across and put it here. You can take the cutting board out and you have all these different little trays. It, it's nice is because you don't need to bring like a strainer. You know, if you're making a salad and you want to rinse things off, you put it here and it's gonna, the, you know, a dry, this kind of like a dry rack too for cups and bowls you can put there and it will drip down below. You can pull them out too and utilize them differently. If you don't want to fill up this entire sink, but you need some, you put some water in here and it just kind of hangs out there and you can wash your dishes. This pulls out and then you have this massive sink. <laughs> it's so big. I, like this is a beautiful sink. I really, really like it. If you like cooking and it's just, it's also very functional with all of these different features on it. Really good utilization for the sink. Uh, let's look at the cabinets here. Obvious, obviously the sink is put behind there, but right here we have a nice size cupboard space. You also have your water pump and your bladder too. So that helps with pressure and also makes it so the pump lasts a lot longer. And then once again, these locking metal latches. One of the things that I love about this is you have heat ducts all the way down here. If you look along the floor, all the way. You also have them into the bathroom and you have them at the foot of the bed. A lot of times the floors get pretty cold when you're out camping and because where the heat ducts are all located, it kind of keeps the nice heat, radiant heat all across the floor, which I really like. Now right here you have a bunch more cupboard space. Come into here, you have the manuals. It actually has some keys too. And then down here we have another cupboard and have a soft close too, which locks in. And one of my favorite things is this little rack. Lots of space to throw in some extra canned goods or whatever you want in there. Underneath here, you have access to your uh, water heater and furnace, which is the Truma system, which we're not gonna get into that too much. I've already mentioned a little bit of details on that. 
Uh, right here you have your fridge and freezer. The uh, freezer is down here, which makes a lot of sense to me is because you don't use the freezer as much. You want to be able to access the fridge more frequently. And so the fridge is right here. Um, it's all 12 volt. I do like how they have it in separate zones because you, uh, as you turn this on, the light will kick on and then the fan kicks on and you can have different settings. These fridges are super, super efficient. They're made for the marine industry and yachts, right? So you see these isotherms and $100 million yachts. Uh, they really are some of the best fridges out on the market and it's pure 12 volts. So you're not dealing with any gas or propane. Uh, these are way more efficient in the summer, hot months, and they just work really, really well. It uses something like two amps um, at a in a peak of about 6.5. This is the uh, they're made in Italy, and this is the uh, the model on this isotherm is that uh, CR195. It's the dual fridge and freezer setup. It's about it's 6.9 cubic feet, so it's very large. And this freezer down here is also very big. The cool thing is, once again, you don't have to have them both running. So if you're not taking a crazy long trip and you're not freezing food, you can just use the upper portion and you can keep this portion turned off and save energy. So look at that, metal latches with a metal striker. It's a big deal because you can, one, you can slam it and two, it's just going to stay Put. These fridges are, like I said, designed for yachts, and I think it's something like a 45 degree angle that it can be jostled back and forth, which is really, really astonishing. A lot of RVs that use the propane refrigerators, you know, if you're a little bit off balance, those fridges just don't work. Now, moving up from the fridge, talking about cold stuff, let's talk about the air conditioning unit. So, this is a Dometic RTX 2000 AC unit. The really cool thing about this AC is it's actually 12 volt. So there's no need to turn on the inverter to power this AC. Because it's 12 volt also, it has less draw than most RV AC units. In a lot of standard RV units, you're gonna have to plug in no matter what to use your AC. But in the X195, there's no need to plug in if you need to use your AC. Now, when Shane talked about this in the previous tour, which you're not gonna see because I've cut it out and I've replaced him, <laughs> but we hadn't tested this out in the summer yet because we did this tour in February. And so I think it's fitting to give you an update on how this AC works. And the truth is it works depending on your use case. So in Utah at our facility in Utah Valley, we've ran this AC for weeks and weeks off grid, not plugged in and we've been just fine. Now that's an 80 to 90 degree temperatures. Let's say you're going to Vegas, which we actually took the Romer one, same interior, same AC. And we went, for a little over 24 hours off grid running the AC. Now it was 105, 107 degrees. And so if you're gonna be in hot temperatures long term, we suggest bring your generator with you or be plugged in. Now, because of the insulation on this trailer, this unit does a good job at cooling it fairly quickly. But let's say you're in Texas, you're in Florida, you're in Vegas, you're in the desert, you're in Death Valley. We suggest plugging in, like I said, now we do have some options for the AC. If you feel like this one's not enough, let's say you like it really, really cold in your trailer or you're gonna be in hot temperatures a lot of the time, we have some other options for AC that we can offer. So just talk to a sales coach and they can help you kind of dial in your options. But here at ROA, our sales coaches will tell you, just take it as is, don't go crazy with the options or modifications and then see what works for you and what doesn't. Because every use case is different. That's the hard thing about trailers is I may use it full time, but somebody else may only use it on the weekends or somebody might use it in cooler climates and other people might use it in hotter climates. So we always suggest take the trailer as is, see what works for you and then look at your options after. And I definitely suggest that for the AC. Take it as is and see if it works for you. So that's the AC. We're happy to have tested it in hot weather and we'll say this trailer cooled down really nice. So go watch the heat tests in Las Vegas on the Romer 1 if you want to see more info about the AC. Let's head over to the electronics above the door. Up here we have all of our controls. Right here we have the switch for the light bar and it does have a little blue illumination around it, which is very nice. Last night I was going to bed 
and I turned on all the lights and I noticed this little light was on and I was like, oh, I left my light bar on. <laughs> so I got up and turned it off. It's funny, it's silly, you wouldn't realize it, but there's a lot of trailers, you have no idea where the switches go and you have no idea whether they're on or off. Um, so it's nice to have that indicator. Moving here, this is your solar charge controller. All the entire power system in the Explorers are all Go Power. It's a Canadian company. This is your MPPT solar remote charge controller. And here you can see all of the different things that your solar is doing, your, your wattage, your amp. Um, it's in bulk charge right now. You can also scroll through here. It has a light that illuminates when you press the button. And you can see all the history of what's going on. So I can go into each one of these stages. This is stage one, and it can tell me what that stage is actually bringing in. Right now it's bringing in 156 watts. And it's winter here, and the sun is getting kind of off in the distance right now. It's getting late. So that's pretty good. But you can go down through here and check each individual battery bank. And this one's bringing in 160 watts. And then over here, if we come over to this, this is your Go Power, and this is kind of like your easy, quick monitoring system. We have a thousand eighty amp hours on this system, and right now we're sitting at a thousand forty-five. So last night, I think my video guy, he was probably charging every battery on planet Earth for his cameras, for his drones. Running, were you running your laptop too? So you had everything plugged in: heater, furnace, lights all night last night, right? He probably he probably drained this couple hundred amps, I'm sure, and we're already almost up to 100%, 97%, um, pretty close to getting back to the 180 amps. As you can see, currently we're bringing in 13.7 amps or 185 watts, which is actually kind of the same thing that this thing was telling you, but you have a quick access there and you can kind of go through this menu. And it also illuminates, and this is really important to me. It's really nice, and when it's flashing, it means it's charging. If you press it again, it will, you can get it to stop doing that, and you can turn it off. Over here, we have the our inverter charger controller system, and you just crank this on, and it initializes, and that gives you power to all of your 120 volt outlets. So if you wanna plug in a laptop, if you wanna plug your induction cooktop, all of those things go through that. And really, really cool system. Let's check out the battery system that powers all of these electronics. Let's lift this bed up and check this out. This is unbelievable. These are 360 amp hours lithium made by Xperion. And you can see that they put the Imperial Outdoors logo on this, which is really cool. I love this Viper with this lit eye. These batteries are a really cool, very robust. They're all mounted down on the floor too and secured in here nicely with these mounts. These right here are the actual straps that hold them in. They're metal and that holds them down to the floor very well. Another thing about these batteries that's very important is just below them you can see there's actually a duct down there and this duct first of all it pushes some nice air onto the floor but it also creates a nice radiant heat underneath this bed and keeps this whole entire battery compartment warm so these batteries cannot freeze because lithium batteries are a little temperamental when you get below freezing temps so he thought that through to be able to have heat in this area. Moving over from the batteries over to here, you have your your panel for all your breakers and your fuses. You pull that out. You have your 12 volt and your 120. And then when you close this up, moving back over into this area, you have your inverter, your 2000 watt inverter or 100 amp charger. Uh, so this system works to invert your batteries your 12 volt or 13 volt lithium batteries into a regular power to your outlet so you can run you know your induction or a, a blow dryer or a blender whatever you want to run you can run it through that that's what this does but this system also duels as a charging device to keep your batteries fully charged so if you pull into a campground or if you park this in a garage where you don't have solar or sun shining on your batteries this thing would also charge your batteries when it's plugged in uh, over here you also have a secondary charging system and this is actually a, it's a smart charging charger, but it's also a converter. And essentially what this does is this makes it so it can bypass this system. So if you were ever in a situation where this 
system failed, you have a secondary. It's a redundancy essentially. And this will actually charge your batteries separately from your um, inverter charger system. And there's a few reasons why he's done that. Mostly it's because of cold temps because technically lithium batteries, if you're parked outside stored somewhere where it's frigid and there's no heat to your batteries, even if you wanted to turn on the heat, you couldn't because the Truma takes 12 volt power or battery power. So your batteries would need to be working. So this system bypasses all your battery system so that you could plug your trailer in and engage and fire up the Truma furnace and get the heat up to temp, which would heat the batteries up and then give you power and then everything else would work. I don't want to get too complicated. <laughs> I don't want to go dig too much into it. It's just a lot of technicalities, but the reason why we have this is because there's, you know, people have run into these issues in the past. And when you have more redundancies, you have less likely to have things that will fail on you or you get stranded and just it ruins your trip. And then up here, along here, you can see you have your uh, solar MPPT solar charge controllers and those run all your different solar arrays. Another cool thing is if one of your arrays gets damaged for whatever reason, you hit a tree and it shatters something, wire goes bad, a connection, you have three separate systems. So you're, you, you have a, three redundancies with your solar. And then of course, all your fusing and wiring and everything that operates and runs this entire trailer. And then to the right of all this stuff, you have just an open area for some extra storage. Okay, now if I come and lay down here, to go to bed, I got my, my reading lights. If I press and hold, they go blue, which is nice, you know, for nighttime. Uh, you got a nice leather back board too, which is great. Um, down over here, which is important for society, is you have your USB connectors <laughs> right there. So you can always have your cell phone, your device right next to you and you can waste your life away in bed. No, I'm just kidding, but you know what I mean? And then you have your 120 outlet. So if you have a laptop or something you want to charge or maybe you don't have a USB, you can plug it in there. And I really like this. This goes to the main lights in the roof the cabin that shuts everything off. So let me show you this light switch right here turns off all of those ceiling lights and then you can turn them back on. And if you press and hold this switch, they will dim or go brighter. Let me show you, see that nice and dim. So at night you can have a mood lighting. I really love the lighting in this trailer and everything is LED, super efficient, doesn't take a lot of power. One of the nice things is, is this is a full walk around north and south bed. So you can easily get out of the bed. You can make the bed without any issues. Right here, you have some nice cabinetry, lots of space here. You also have lots of storage up here too. And it's the same on the other side. You also have a cubby in here where you can put some stuff. This bed is a full size, it's an actual residential. So a standard full will fit in here that you can buy anywhere. So you can choose any mattress you want to put in here if you want. It comes with all of this bedding and pillows too that come standard in the trailer. Uh, down over here, I have my safety, which is my fire extinguisher, gotta have that. I'm coming over to here. I do wanna show you, you have your light switches. These are like a European switch. I love these, they're all labeled. You got your lounge, you know, and you press. And then, and the same thing, the ceiling, like if you press and hold, it dims. Also, if you press both of these two at the bottom, it shuts off all your lights. If you press the two at the top, it turns them all on. And then this light, this backlight, it actually goes dim. So you can have it lit up or you can make it go black. So at night, like I mentioned earlier, I hate little lights, little ambient lights that shine at night. I don't think it's good for your sleep. The way everything is on this unit, you can turn off every single light and have it pitch black in here. You'd be surprised. There's a lot of trailers out there where it's like wherever you plug in the LED or like something like this, like the light never turns off. It's always on. It's just silly. First of all, it's, a it's an energy draw, so it drains your batteries dead. You got a lot of batteries to drain if you need them. If you wanted to drain them, it would take a long time but it's just little, it's just silly things. But uh, let's head on back into my favorite part of the trailer, the bathroom. It is getting hot in here. Um, so we're gonna open this window and grab uh, right here on my controller. 
I have this fancy little Max Vent fan. And this is like one of the best that you can buy. You turn this thing on and it has different fan speeds. I'm gonna turn it on max and I'm gonna, you can choose air in or air out. I'm doing air out so it will suck the air from that side and bring it here. And it says the room temperature inside the trailer is like 80 degrees, which is true, it's really hot in here. So we're gonna just try to cool it down really quick. You can actually even set the temperature and you can put this on auto. So if you're out hiking, it will automatically open up and start blowing. So it kind of keeps the keeps it nice and cool in the trailer. Also great for condensation. But here we come in here. It also has a cover above that vent so it can't rain. Some some old vents back in the day they would open and do all that auto stuff. But then if it started raining, it would like it would uh, rain inside the trailer while well, you're gone hiking. I love that there's a bench in here. This is very comfortable. I'm uh, 230 something pounds and six feet tall and I have lots of leg space in here. Like I don't hit the ceiling. So I am, like I said, I'm six feet tall, but I don't hit that. So if you're, obviously if you're six four, <laughs> six five, you're gonna hit. Cause I got about an inch and I'm six foot. If I go into this dome area, then I have maybe two to three inches. But yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely not for giants, but uh, come on, you're out camping. <laughs> what do you what do you expect? Uh, you can sit down and shower in there. Uh, you have a soap tray right here and this guy kind of adjusts up and down and it gives you different flows. Uh, I love the floor in here too. There's a underneath this wood teak floor. There's a shower pan. All right, thanks Shane for showing us the amazing shower which is right in front of me. I'm gonna show you the rest of the bathroom and talk about a cool option that you have. But first, it's got this beautiful sink with a black kind of matte black faucet. If I had this in my house, I'd be happy with it, and it's in this trailer. It looks way better than my sink at home. We also have a mirror, so if you want to make sure you're still ugly, you can actually have a mirror here to look at you. Or if you're a lady, you can use it to do your makeup, whatever it is. There's a nice towel ring here for your hand towels, and then you have actually a ton of storage in here. So if you need to store toilet paper, you know, hygiene products, you got cupboards, you got drawers, you have plenty of storage space here. You can also store your bags for your Lavio dry flush in these drawers. And that brings me to the toilet, which I'm sitting on right now. Real quick, I want to show you this door. This slides like this. And then you have your toilet paper right here. You can easily, you know, reach and everything. But, but the Lavio dry flush is an incredible toilet because it kind of works. I don't know if you've seen a diaper genie or I have cats, so I have a litter genie, but it will you do your business and then you push a button and it will wrap it up and seal it. And Shane did a video on this and he was putting all sorts of things like rubber ducks, tampons, wads of toilet paper, and it wraps it up without a problem. Nice thing is you can actually use any toilet paper with this toilet and a lot of other RV toilets aren't that way. The other really cool thing about this toilet is it's waterless. So there's no black tank in this trailer, which means it's truly off grid. You're not gonna be wasting your precious water on your toilet so that is a really cool thing it's also got an internal battery it is wired but there is an internal battery backup so this thing will work even if you for some reason don't have power now I want to get to the options because some people have really specific preferences about how they do their duty and the Lavio is amazing but it's not for everybody so there are some options that we're offering one of them being an option to burn your poop which is the Cinderella toilet. And the other is an option if you want to turn your poop into fertilizer, you can do that with a composting toilet. So some people have experience with off-grid toilets and they have a preference going into it when they purchase their trailer, they know what they want. But a lot of people really aren't sure what toilet is going to work best for them. So as I said with the AC, I would suggest using what comes stock, which is Lavio, great toilet, and seeing if it works for you. If it doesn't, you always have the option to swap it out for a different toilet through ROA Off-Road. And I haven't mentioned this throughout the tour, but ROA Off-Road, we have experience, but also feedback from all of our roamers, which has made us kind of dial in those options and make sure that it's gonna work and it's gonna work for you. So if a toilet is something you wanna option out, talk to a sales coach and they'll help you decide what might be right for you or get done what you think you need. But like I said, go stock first and then see. 
All right, so Shane talked about the shower, but I wanted to butt in because he missed a great opportunity to do his classic drop the soap test. It's an important test for RVs. First, there is this seat like he talked about, and it's awesome because you could, if you were just exhausted after a day of hiking, you can just kind of sit here and let the water run on you. Or we can stand up, and if I drop the soap, I don't have a problem. I'm 6'2 and like 290 pounds, so when I go there to pick it up, no issue. Or I can just sit down and kind of reach there. So you have multiple ways you can pick up the soap if you drop it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this updated tour of the Explore 195. This trailer is truly incredible, built in America, and we really hope you enjoy the updated options that we are offering now on this trailer. I didn't cover everything that you can do on this trailer that you can option out, but we have a link below and it's got the brochure for the X195 and a 3D tour. So if you wanna kinda of get a feel for the trailer, go around, look inside, there's a 3D tour of this unit. But also in the brochure, you'll see a section that's got additional options that you can do for this trailer. And so go ahead, download that brochure if you're interested in this unit. And this unit behind me is actually for sale right now. So if you're interested in this exact unit that we showed off today, reach out to us. You can talk to a sales coach at 801-860-0035. You can also go to our website, rvsofamerica.com, and check out this trailer and more. We have a bunch of awesome off-road trailers you can check out. And on our YouTube channel, where you are right now, there's a bunch of other full tours on all of our other units. You can also watch the old tour of the X195 or the Romer 1 tour and get a feel for what options are available. Now, at ROA Off-Road, like I said, we are unique and we have an experience center. So when you purchase an X195, it won't just be a transactional relationship. You're not just gonna come to ROA, pick it up and leave. We make sure that we support you after the sale. So that's something that's really important to ROA is supporting you after you buy your camper. We have a tech line. We have an awesome service shop. So when you buy this trailer, you know you're in good hands with ROA. Thanks for watching. Hit subscribe if you want to see more full tours like this, and we'll see you on the next one.